85. A saturated solution of a slightly soluble electrolyte in contact with some of the solid electrolyte is said to be a system in equilibrium. Explain. Why is such a system called a heterogeneous equilibrium? Okay, so there's two questions here, right? We first have to explain why the first sentence is true or how the first sentence is true. And then we have to talk about why is that system a heterogeneous equilibrium? Okay, so for this, I'm going to explain it in a type of, you know, a theoretical concept, right? They're saying that we have a saturated solution. Saturated solution means that we need to have a KSP value, right? And all KSP values come from an equation in which you do have a slightly soluble electrolyte. Now, in this case, electrolyte just basically means that it has a charge difference, right? Electrolyte is your ionic compounds. So I'm just going to for case and purposes, I'm just going to say that we have a slightly soluble ionic compound. Let's just call it A, B, right? There's my two different elements, right? Or, you know, even to put it into perspective, we could think of, you know, an actual uh, slightly soluble electrolyte. Um, I guess we'll choose, I don't know, AgCl, right? Silver chloride. We've seen this time and time again. Uh, we're at, you know, number number 85 in this chapter, right? So AgCl is slightly soluble, meaning that majority of it will be a solid, but some of it will dissolve into its two ions. And the two ions are the Ag and the Cl, Cl right? Charges, one for one, Ag is always a plus one charge and Cl is always a, a negative one charge. And since they are charges, these are aqueous. Okay. Uh, equations balance, so we don't even care about that, right? So this is just our general example. Now, this is the slightly soluble electrolyte, it's the ionic compound, and it is coming in contact with some of the solid electrolyte, right? Okay, so what does that basically mean? Well, that means when you're saturated, both of these processes are you know, happening at the same time, and the rate is just constant. Keep in mind that if we're going from our compound and breaking it down into its, you know, two ions, this forward reaction, this is the dissolution or dissolving, right? Dissolution. However, if you are saturated, that means that at the same rate that you're dissolving your solid into your two ions, the two ions are coming back together to form the actual solid. And the reverse reaction is called the precipitation. Precipitation. So since we are a saturated solution, this is at equilibrium because the precipitation reaction, the reverse reaction, and the forward reaction, the dissolution, both reactions, both reactions are happening at the same rate. So both reactions have the same rate, right? One is just dissolving into the two ions, the other one is, you know, precipitating. So that's why this is in equilibrium. Anytime that you're in a saturated solution, you're always going to be having those two rates or the two forward and the reverse reaction happening at the same time. Okay. And now we could basically answer the question of, and maybe I'll just bold this a little bit more. Now we can answer the question of why this is heterogeneous. Well, if we look at the states and if these two uh, reactions are happening at the same time. You're breaking this compound down and you're building this compound up, right? The states are different. Keep in mind, this is going all the way back to Gen Chem 1, like the first chapter. Heterogeneous means that you have different states, right? And if you have different states, you can see the difference. So like a heterogeneous mixture would be, you know, you can see, um, you know, the difference between two different things. Do they really have to be two different states? No, but you just have to see a clear difference. So like oil and vinegar, if you're not shaking it up, there's two different layers, right? So two different states, two different layers, you just have to see a difference. 
And in here, it's heterogeneous. So heterogeneous. Because at the same time, you are having your solid, that's the precipitate, and you have aqueous solutions. So you will see the solid in the sea of ions. And that's why it's heterogeneous. And that answers your two questions. And just because I have to center everything. There we go. That looks beautiful now. Okay. So two different states, solid and aqueous. There's clearly a difference. You will be able to see the solid in the sea of the aqueous material. And then the other question we explained. So we are good. Number 85 is done. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help us out, just click the subscribe button. Thank you so much. And I will be talking to you in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.